Hey folks, Ryan Dahl here with another episode of Praise Charts Live. And as you can tell, my office is looking a little bit different today. And no, this is not a green stream. Green stream. I am in East Barrier Lake, which is in the middle of beautiful British Columbia. I say beautiful because that's like the brand of our province. I live in Canada and uh, love this place. And in the summer, we get to come up to our family cabin here and enjoy the beautiful lake and grass and mountains and, and all of that. But today, I get to have a great conversation with a good friend, Stephen Duncan, from the Worship Coalition. So we're going to banter a little and have some great chat about his new album and new songs. They're such great songs that they are write, writing all out of a very unique community. So we're gonna hear the story of that. So here we go with Stephen Duncan and the Worship Coalition. Stephen, looking good, man. Hey. How are you, Ryan? <laughs> I always like looking at you. I feel like I'm looking in the mirror. There you go. <laughs> Ryan and Stephen show. <laughs> Absolutely. We look like we're brothers for sure. Yeah, we are brothers. We are brothers. I love it. So uh, excited about you, your ministry, the friendship that we can enjoy, the, the book you're writing, the songs you're coming out with. So much uh, great stuff. And then the other thing I just discovered a couple of minutes ago is that we both have the same coffee cup that has a little bit of a story behind it. So there you go. Show your Tim Hortons. So way back in the day, Tim Hortons was owned by Canadians and I sent probably like a hundred cups. Do you want to hear an interesting story? Actually, I went through of Tim Hortons and I'm at the drive through and I'm like, uh, yeah, I would like to order 25 <laughs> ceramic cups, please. They were like, uh, that'll be $250. <laughs> so I went through the drive through and picked them up. So maybe you got one of those. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I hope so. Uh, that was fantastic. It was such a surprise because, you know, when when you're in the industry, you know, you, you get a lot of food baskets and um, and m muffins and chocolate and stuff around Christmas time. But yeah. to get your own coffee mug, that as you can tell, the muffins didn't last, but this did. I know. I love it. I was showing uh, Stephen the, the chip in my cup. Like normally I would throw a cup away once it gets a chip because you wouldn't want to like, you know, damage your mouth. But no way. I am not throwing that cup away. So anyways, <laughs> great to share this time with you. Let's talk a little bit about the Worship Coalition, uh, this incredible community of musicians and uh and people, songwriters, do you want to just give us a little bit of a, like, give us your elevator pitch. What's the brief introduction to what this community is all about? And then we're going to talk about some new music that you guys have been launching in the last couple of weeks. You bet. So our mission statement is to raise up an army of worshipers to shake and change nations and governments. And so we actually, instead of hosting uh, songwriting events and worship events where people have to come to us, we bring our team to them um, and uh, we try to unify cities and regions by finding mm. one unified yes that every denomination, every generation and every preference of music uh, can come together and say yes um, as one unified voice uh, to God. And it's an incredible process. Mm. It's a lot of hard work being in trenches with people. But you know what? Um, it's starting to pay off in a big way. And we're just so excited about how much glory that God is getting through, mm -hmm. uh, through these people that are committing to this process. And what a time to be coming in with that story of unity. I mean, I'm not an American, so, you know, I just watch, you know, the, the show that uh, America offers the world as far as all that's going on. But there's just, there's so many reasons to be uh, divided. You know, we all have different opinions, different beliefs or theologies or all these things. So much difference is prominent and social media just exacerbates that. Don't you think? It's like, I'm going to put my opinion out to the world and tell everyone. So you're coming in with this story of unity. And uh, I, th I feel like even as I watch the videos of these worship songs, you can see the heartbeat of like a peace and a, a unity that encircles what you guys are doing. So that seems to come through in what I'm seeing. 
Yeah, that's awesome. And that's a lot of getting together to pray and fast together um, mm. as a group. Um, it also includes other people around the world praying and fasting for this. Um, I'll, I'll give you one quick example. When we got together to write this album, we weren't even writing an album necessarily. We were just writing songs for Bozeman, Montana, and the churches to sing in Bozeman, Montana. And a hundred churches in Uganda heard what we were doing. They all got together and they prayed and fasted for our group for an entire week leading wow. up to us writing songs together. So you're not just sensing the unity of the group in Bozeman. You're sensing yeah. the unity from believers who are know what God is doing right now. Well, not like know, but they sense what God is doing. And yeah. they're just getting in line with what he's doing and uh, and saying yes from wherever they're at. Yeah, beautiful. Can you give me a little idea as to how you shape a weekend like this? You go into a city, are other people invited, or you're bringing uh, songwriters in? Or like, how do you how do you get good songwriters into a community together to write such incredible uh, music? What is the process, and then what does this weekend look like? How do you shape it, set it up? How do you create that vibe of um, hey, let's let's join hearts together? Give me a window into that. Yeah, so um, it's a twofold process, really, um, starting with the fact that we meet with a group of local leaders um, that have the vision for this, too, that we can help step alongside and uh, and build this from the ground up. So this, these are typically worship pastors or worship spreaders in the area um, that are already starting to gather some, some songwriters, and we just come in and we get structure to how they sh- how they meet, um, what they should be talking about in their meetings, how often they should be gathering, things like that. Out of that group, they will give us a mission statement. We ask them a question. We say, what lies do your community believe? Mm-hmm. And from there, we go into Scripture and we, and we go and find the truths that are in Scripture that will banish those lies forever. And, and so based off of that information, then what we do is we invite, I invite some professional worship songwriters um, and when I say that, you know, some people who are watching might think that I'm, I'm inviting industry people. I'm not inviting industry people necessarily, but people who have proven that they are shepherds yeah. um, of songs and songwriters. Yeah. And it just so happens that God decided to breathe on their songs and send them around the world um, while they were focused on loving the church well. Um, and, uh, and so those are the people that we bring in. So we'll bring mm-hmm. in two or three, uh, professionals and, uh, and then I come in as well. We'll bring some room leaders, uh, from people who have gone through coaching through the worship coalition or have been to another retreat in another region. We'll all descend on, uh, on a city or a region and, um, we'll do a three day event where we'll, we'll worship and then do some teaching in the morning on a Thursday morning. We'll write Thursday morning, we'll write Thursday afternoon, we'll worship with those songs that evening, we'll do it all again Friday. Saturday changes a little bit in that we start the same way in the morning, but then in the afternoon we start talking about stewardship and how to move forward as a community and how to contend for unity because the enemy is going to try to slip in there and start to dismantle Mm. it as soon as he can. So so we, we talk about how to protect your heart, guard your heart how to be, you know, put your head on a swivel, keep your eyes open. Um, and then that night, and this is this is probably the most, um, I, I don't know, I don't want to say aggressive, but audacious goal that we have um, is that we then do a night of worship that night for the entire community. Hmm. And we introduce five to seven songs that were written in the last 48 hours. Wow. Um, and yeah. it's it's... It's a wild goal, but we have a band ready to go there um, from that community. And then uh, along with the pros that we bring in, we put on this night of worship. And I'm telling you, it's uh, it's something incredible um, to teach new songs, but also to hear these this community sing the words at the top of their lungs um, without, you know, without any prompting. 
and they they sing them as if they've known them forever. Yeah. Um, it's something like I've never experienced before, and it happens every time. Oh, beautiful, Incredible. beautiful. And so I just want you to know that this relationship that we're able to have between Praise Charts and Worship Coalition as well, I'm going to, uh, I was actually slated to come this fall, but that's not working out now. But I, I am hoping that I'll be able to come to one of these events uh, soon in the future. But even so, we're bringing this music, just like this new album that we're going to be talking about here, it's coming into Praise Charts and trying to share these great songs with others. And I'm telling you, like, it, go and listen to these songs because they don't sound like they were just written in a garage or, or you know, played in a garage kind of thing. These are really great sounding, beautifully produced and, uh, and wonderful lyrics, deep lyrics, lyrics that come from a real authentic community. So um, I'm excited about this kind of cooperation, this friendship that you and I can have and that we can have between praise charts and the worship coalition and it's going to be ongoing right this isn't just one album this is uh for years and years to come that we'll be able to share this journey together yeah absolutely and i'm excited and definitely excited in getting you uh mm -hmm. to one of our events next year we've got a few coming uh coming down the pike for next year um we're looking at doing six events next year Oh, so I'm wow. um, really excited about that. But yeah, this is definitely an ongoing thing. We just uh, got done uh, riding out in New England, um, in Manchester, New Hampshire, just north of, of Boston a couple of weeks ago. And we have another 30 songs out of that that the churches have already started to lead. I mean, like we're, we're getting 30 to 50 usable songs. And when I say don't just mean oh, that's nice. Our worship leader wrote a song. Let's, <laughs> let's, you know, right. Yeah. Jesus, let's give them a hand clap and, and, and encourage them. I'm yeah. talking about you, you go from, you go from your current set into one of these songs and back into a Hillsong song or a Bethel song or an elevation song. And you don't feel the dip, right? right. Um, yeah. when, yeah. when you do these songs. So, um, so we're really excited about that, and uh, we're going to be putting out some songs on that um, uh, sometime next year. Of course, it takes a little bit to coordinate all of it, but right. um, we'll be putting out some songs on that next year. Great stuff. Okay, well, let's get uh, let's dive into the latest batch of songs that come from an album called I Want To Holy. And uh, and then just last week, they launched the latest single from this called It's Your Goodness. And we're going to talk specifically uh, about those songs. So excited for that. And one thing I just wanted to note is that the link for these songs is in the show notes. And I just texted Stephen this morning and got permission to make the chord charts for now free. I don't know how long that's going to be, but come and grab them because I just, I'm all about like, I want people to get out their guitars, get out the pianos and go, okay, let's just try this. Let's, you know, I mean, I just downloaded this for free, whatever. And then just, you know, give it a chance, right? And then we'll see how the songs develop and evolve and and that in the uh, in the community of what we have in, in praise charts. So I'm excited for that. The link is in the show notes, and, uh, and you can preview the songs and get them all on Spotify. Unfortunately, we're not going to be previewing them here in this uh, this video that we're recording together. But let's talk about It's Your Goodness. Uh, uh, you had an interesting question that you said you asked everybody in order to prompt them for writing this song. So tell a little bit about how that kind of came about, where this song came from. Yeah. So um, this was, gosh, I think day two or day three of the mm -hmm. event um, back in 2021. And um, the question that I asked everybody that morning was, if you were to sing one thing around the throne for eternity to God, what would you be proud to sing and, and able to sing over and over and over again without it ever growing tired? Yeah. Um, and the group that went and wrote this song was like, God is just so good. It's unfathomable yeah. how he is. Um, and actually, a lot of these songs came from that writing prompt. Same thing with um, I Want To Holy. Um, you know, the word holy is the only word that we can describe God with that we don't describe everybody else with. Mm -hmm. um, and so... Um, these songs are coming from a place of going, you know what, um, 
God, God is establishing uh, his will on earth as it is in heaven right now. And yeah. we don't have to wait to heaven to start the songs that we would like to sing around the throne for eternity. And so, you know, these, these groups are diving into Revelation. They're seeing what the elders and the saints and the angels are going to be singing. Um, you know, holy, holy, worthy, 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 you know, all of this. And, um, and that's where they dove into was Revelation. And they started um, writing these songs um, of God's goodness and his holiness. Yeah. Um, and they're just stunning. Beautiful. Well, the song, It's Your Goodness, I think that came from uh, back in the Old Testament, the Exodus 34, 6, when it was one of the first or maybe second time that God ever revealed his name. He was just, he was uh, attempting to like connect and reveal the heart of who he was. And what does the scripture say is like, I am the Lord, your God, full of um, compassion and mercy. Maybe you can. Maybe you have the scripture in front of you. You can help me out. But what what all the lyrics are, or or the words are of that uh, scripture, full of compassion and mercy. Yeah. Um, do you have that on hand? I just I have a limited screen, and I just fell from my. Yeah, the Lord, the Lord, yes. merciful and gracious, mm-hmm. slow to anger, and abounding in loving kindness and in truth. I love that. And that's love in that. Exodus thirty four. Yeah. Yeah. So it's nice um, to know that and, these and yeah, so- God, go ahead. Yeah. Just God revealing himself as, as loving kindness and truth to, to Moses at the time. Um, and his name, like him and revealing his name in a way that says, I'm slow to anger and I'm yeah. loving kindness to you. Right. It's like to, to go back to the roots of that and going, God revealing himself, really, you know, to Moses and to all of us in scripture that early on, you know, for us to reconnect with that Mm -hmm. um, now, that's where unity comes from, Mm -hmm. right? The unity that we've been talking about and the, and the anointing and the holiness of, of these moments that we get to worship together is um, comes from us being rooted in the word in spirit and in truth. And then out of that, he reveals a greater, um, you know, a greater sense of who he is to us as we connect to how he's already revealed himself. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's beautiful. And I, I'm just thinking about part of your vision or your mission statement was to come in and let, read the first part of your, your mission statement again, because something really triggered me on that. Say that again. To raise up an army of worshipers yeah. to shake and change things and governments. Yeah, shake and change. So I'm just was thinking about how worship songs can have that kind of impact on, you know, governments and nations, many of which are struggling so much, struggling to find uh, unity, struggling to get along. And and here we are bringing a song that's that's offering like the tender hearted love and compassion of our great God, like just bringing something that's so opposite to the like the brute force of governmental power or, you know, however we have an image of that. It's just bringing the rich history of who, what the nature of our our God is and, and bringing that through worship songs. So it's beautiful. Yeah, it seems like we should be coming into a city and writing all these warfare songs and like break yeah. down the walls and right. you know things like that. But we found and we found in this um, retreat that it was intimacy with God right. that actually brought the unity and the shaking. Um, and actually, I wrote this down for our our conversation today in okay. in Scripture in Haggai chapter two verses six through nine. It actually talks about the shaking. It says, this is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth. See the dry land. I will shake all nations and what is desired by all nations. Come and I will fill this house with my glory. So we're welcoming that. We're just saying, shake this house with your glory, right? Come in, invade our hearts invade our systems and, and invade our families invade our expectations 
right? And we lay that all down to pick up whatever you have for us. Beautiful, beautiful.